Welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the top 10 cryptocurrencies by market cap. We're going to start with Bitcoin number one, followed by Ethereum, BNB, Solana, XRP, Cardano, and then we end it with Avalanche at number 10. Let's get straight into it. Bitcoin against USD. So Bitcoin is still above the skinny pink line. This means that we are still in a bullish bias. Yes, sir. We remain with our bullish bias as long as BDC is above the skinny pink line. We're above, we're above it. So we remain with our bullish bias, but, 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 uh, it was severely, severely overbought, not on the weekly though, if you move up to the, uh, uh, not on the daily, but on the weekly, you'll see that we're severely, 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 severely overbought, which means that it's only a matter of time before a deep retrace comes on for BTC. Anyway, um, the last week, I mean last week, right, uh, we closed the candlestick with a, it looks something like a doji. Something like a doji. Dojis are indecisions, like for example over here. Indecision. There's indecision in the markets. But uh, before that, uh, we close with a big green body, right? Uh, we are overbought. Yes, we are overbought. Uh, and again, it doesn't really matter in the sense that uh, we will continue with our bullish bias. It's just that we will proceed with caution, uh, knowing that things are overbought, right? The moment we were overbought was over here, right? But uh, the candlesticks were still green. It was still green. So of course, we maintain our bullish bias. But we know that uh, things are overbought. The point is, um, okay. And then there was big selling happening over here, right? This was not just a shooting star on the daily, but also on the weekly. It's a big one. So on the weekly, you'll see it as well. Not exactly a shooting star, but you know that there's already selling happening over here, right? Um, but uh, eventually, uh, the wheels kicked in. The buying wheels kicked in. The bullish wheels kicked in uh, and pushed the price higher. This was also daily and weekly hammer. Mm, there's fight going on. Bull fight. Uh, and then it rose higher. Uh, we took out these highs and now here we are. Indecision. So while Bitcoin was just in a lull, uh, a lot of altcoins was actually rising. So, <coughs> excuse me. So this means that, um, okay, we're, we're going to have to wait and see how uh, this week pans out, right? Indecision doesn't mean uh, we're going to be reversing. Indecision means uh, that we just didn't know what to do, right? Uh, there was no clear bullish, bearish uh, strength coming on. And again, this week could also still be uh, a down week, but uh, it's very, very, very important that we stay above the previous one, two weeks uh, candlestick, right? We cannot come back down below it. It's very important. We don't. Very, very important. Um, and so, yeah, because I suspect that if and when we drop, uh, this could be a double bearish divergence, you see. It's a lower high on the RSI. Uh, oh, okay, it's not. On the MACD, it's not. So, yeah, I think we're still going to go higher. Even if we were to drop any lower, right, I still think that um, buying pressure was still kicking to push the price higher for BTC. Um, and if you look at the daily, it's still, yeah, not exactly that clear, right? Uh, there is a bullish engulfing. I mean, if I were to uh, analyze each candlestick, right, something like a doji, this, okay, wait, let's see here. Okay, this is great. This is something like a doji. You see, dojis are in decisions. That was yesterday, Sunday. Nobody is, you know, uh, in the markets and people are just enjoying themselves um, during the weekends. Uh, and then previously, we got a bullish engulfing. So bullish engulfing is bullish, right? So we closed above the Previous days, um, candlestick. This was if today is Monday, uh, Monday, Sunday, Saturday, Friday. So Saturday closed above Friday, All right? Uh, again, hammer, hammer. I still see signs of our uh, bullishness. No? Bullish, bullish. This is also bullish. Um, it's indecision, but yeah, yeah, I see clear three bullish signs. Things are still bullish. I don't see any bearishness, right? No shooting stars, no bearish engulfings. Okay, there's a bearish engulfing here, but uh, it ended with a hammer as well. So again, I, I'm still bullish for Bitcoin and I still expect uh, more upside, right? Of course, there could be, you know, black swans and all. And of course, Bitcoin can always drop to zero, but uh, things are still pretty bullish uh, from a daily and weekly perspective. From a high time frame perspective, yes, we're overbought, but we still expect a little bit more upside for uh, Bitcoin. And I think it's only a matter of time before we break uh, this high over here, this tippy top at around 53,000. Yeah, I think it's only a matter of time uh, before we break it, right? Uh, 53, obviously the next one will be a very round number at around 55. 
So, you know, 53, 55, and then after that, uh, there could be 57. All we know is that there is significant yeah, resistance at around 57,000. So we're expecting it to head towards uh, 50, 57,000 eventually. But uh, no matter what happens for BDC, it's very, 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 very important that we stay above the skinny pink line. We cannot come back under the skinny pink line. Uh, and this will mean that potentially the uh, bullish tr trend could be uh, ending and we could be going for a new trend change, right? Uh, and the halving is coming. So I suspect like, huh, could this be a different kind of halving? Where Bitcoin corrects? Is it possible? Of course, sure, it's possible. Do you see any signs of bearishness here? No, we don't see any signs of bearishness. So, yeah, I mean, if you look at uh, the past, the halving usually, uh, uh, I mean, uh, preceding, um, preceding a, a continuous crazy run, right, uh, is usually after the halving. But this crazy run has already happened before the halving, right? And it's already, how many days? 462 days, right? From the bottom to the top here, right? It's really 388 days. It's 400 over days. It's, it's, it's quite extended though. And I think it'll be some time before we break this. Uh, and even if we were to hit, let's say we overshoot the resistance. And if we were to hit over here, I suspect, I still suspect uh, there will be a, a deep retrace coming on. Uh, and then, you know, then only do we go back up, right? Maybe end of 2024, maybe. I think halving could be a, a, a sell sell event though I, I can't say for sure again uh, we'll maintain our bullish bias for uh, bitcoin at this point of time right but we're just aware that um selling has started happening over here right selling has started happening so yeah but anyway we're still bullish we are still bullish ethereum yes sir. so ethereum is catching up to bitcoin so if you look at fbdc fbdc uh, if you look at a weekly yeah Big green candlesticks big green candlesticks this is what you call a bullish engulfing bullish engulfings are bullish chart patterns again look at this big candlestick engulfing this red candlestick bullish engulfing right um, if you look at uh, two weeks prior there's a hammer two weeks prior another hammer buying pressure is coming in buying pressure is coming in crazy candle and then again bullish engulf yeah it's, everything is bullish uh, for fbdc at this point of time i also expect uh, fbdc to you know uh, eventually head up here and after that eth goes para and, and, and I think that all the other uh, coins in the Ethereum ecosystem, layer twos, and especially layer threes, uh, is going to see huge, huge moves uh, towards the upside as Ethereum uh, continues rising. So uh, you also would want to have some exposure uh, in Ethereum ecosystem coins. Very important uh, to have some exposure in Eth ecosystem coins. So yeah, again, it's, it's, it's very bullish to me though. Very, very bullish to me. Long legged dojis. It's just like a doji indecision, right? And then, yeah, look at this. We're about to close the month with a big green body. What do you think is going to happen next? The next big green body is going to come uh, for FBDC. More likely than not, of course. Things can always drop to zero. But yeah, I think that's another big green body coming on for FBDC. So uh, if you still have uh, yet to have any exposure to Ethereum, uh, Ethereum layer 1s, uh, sorry, uh, layer 2s or even layer 3s, mm, it's time to consider it. Think about it. Look at Ethereum on the monthly. Big green candlestick. Big green dildos. Uh, 26. We're going to close the month in two more days. So, yeah. Again, look at this. Hammer, hammer, hammer. Yes, shooting star. Yes, we did drop. Again, a hammer came in, pushed the price higher. <sighs> we're still bullish. I think we're going to take out these highs though. Let's drop down to the daily. So when you drop down to the daily, it's, it's a little bit noisy. Right, noisier. But uh, if you were to go up to the higher time frames monthly, you will find tranquility. You will find peace. Um, yeah, so I still think that um, we're going to take out these highs, which is the right shoulder of uh, Ethereum. Right, we got a head and shoulders over here which gave us uh, the target of 666, the devil. So I think we're about to take the right shoulder up. Once we take the right shoulder up, that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. Uh, Ethereum switches, bullish, right? So again, uh, the, the only question I have is that, is this going to be this kind of a squeeze? Or are we just going to go one long shot up? I don't know, bro. Uh, I would still expect Ethereum to hit towards 10,000 by 20... 30 by the next halving 
Ethereum should be at uh, 10,000, right? Uh, but yeah, again, at, at this point of time, I still don't see it yet. So we might do something like this before continuing higher. So the, the halving might be here early though. But I still think we're going to have a new all-time high for BDC. I know it sounds a bit confusing uh, right now, but uh, again, we're still bullish, bullies. Bias bullies. <laughs> Bias bullish. And we still expect more upside for uh, Ethereum and alts in general. Uh, BNB, BNB against BDC. Okay, BNB is also another, what you would call a late bloomer. And I think BNB is in the midst of a wave two. When things move impulsively towards the upside, it's one, two, three, four, five. When it when it drops, it's a ABC aura. One, two, three, four, five. Also five waves down. So for uh, BNB BDC, this is a one, and this looks to me like a two. We're expecting a three. Usually the longest, never the shortest. And then we're expecting a four as we head up towards a five. Ta -da! This is a long journey up, very long journey up. So. Okay, I think it should do well. I think it should do well. Um, we have a target over here, 4658 of the big, 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 big head and shoulders. I think it's going to get invalidated. The moment we take out these highs, this is invalidated. And it feels to me like we're going to invalidate it. If you look very carefully over here, this is a symmetrical triangle. Symmet symmetrical triangles are bullish continuation chart patterns. If the preceding trend is bullish, the subsequent trend will be bullish. If the preceding trend is bearish, the subsequent trend will be bearish. More likely than not, of course, no guarantees. More likely than not. And I think once we break out for F, PDC, that's it. We'll be breaking with very huge volume. Hopefully though, I'm expecting a big spike out above the skinny pink line. And this will be glorious for BNB. Glorious, glorious. Um, because I use BNB a lot. I use Binance a lot. So, uh, BNB against USD. Yeah, we've already invalidated the mountain over here. Mountain, mountain. Drop, 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 drop. I didn't. Buying pressure came in. Push the price higher. Invalidates the target. So we're going to go back to a drawing board. To the drawing board. Right. Um, okay, we'll just let's just remove this and view things from a bullish perspective. BNB against USD is kind of, um, yeah, this is something like a squeeze that came in, right? And we're out. Uh, you can also draw a resistance line across here, right? And call this an inverse head and shoulders, right? If you want to, or you can pull it all the way, disregarding the wick over here, and call this a ascending, if you want to, as well. But uh, the point is, BNB is already out. It's out, boys and girls, it's out. And I've said uh, before, several times, that uh, 300 is where I made my purchase for BNB because I think that this is it. Why would I want to buy a 300? We are above the skinny pink line. There is a consolidation happening over here. There's a squeeze happening and then pump, we're out. Um, more upside? Yeah, more upside. We're overboard though, so I would not recommend going in at this point of time. I still think that um, if you want to take a trade for BNB, it's uh, you gotta wait for a retrace. So yeah, I've already got my field, my few uh, of BNB because you get a discount if you trade BNB. I oh, know if you pay your fees in BNB, there's a discount. So yeah, it's, I normally use a uh, BNB for discounts. So a truckload was bought over here. Not exactly a truckload, but you know, for fees, it's for fees, it's for fees. <laughs> uh, okay, moving on. Where are we? Um. Okay, where do I expect BNB to go to? Yeah, okay, let me just see first. Okay, there is some resistance over here. My assumption is that we might do something like this. You see, value one, value two, and another value three. But again, as long as we're above the skinny pink line, we remain with our bullish bias. Uh, and I think that BNB is setting up for a beautiful inverse head and shoulders. We already saw this uh, ever since. 2022, right? We're waiting for the right shoulder to come uh, by the end of 2024, and then that's it. We go para from there. So, this would be a late 2024, early 2025 kind of a move, in my opinion. Uh, and I still think that there will be a deep retrace, though. So, watch out for that. Anyway, we're still uh, in a bullish bias and still expect uh, more upside, but yeah, there could, become, there could be some whip lashing here and there. So be very, 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 very careful. Solana against BDC. Here we are for Solana. Uh, Solana is still in a bullish trend. Solana is what you call a uh, first mover, right? They are late bloomers and they are first bloomers. We're going to take a late bloomer. 
take a look at the late bloomer after this. So the first bloomer is still in a consolidation. Does this look anything like a bearish? No, it's not. It's a consolidation. Look at this. Up and down and up and down and up and down. And I'm a pew, right? Up and down and up and down. And up and down. Pew. There's, an, there's another pew coming on for Sol BDC. The only question is, where is the low? Where is the low? Oh, that's the question. Anyway, as long as we're above the skinny pink line, we remain with our bullish buyers and we expect uh, more upside for Sol BTC. If anything, this is a wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four. One more wave towards the upside. One more final wave towards the upside for Sol BTC is expected. Uh, and if you look at the RSI, we are already so, so, so corrected. <laughs> so corrected, even though it's just a little bit, but already so corrected, right? Because um, Sol BTC, has been dropping for the past two freaking months. Two months of uh, a deep correction. Mm, and it's, in my opinion, only a matter of time before we reverse back up. So how would we know that it's time to be reversing, you will know? Like for example, right, when we were falling over here, we were like, and then buying pressure comes in. We go back towards the highs over here. You see that? Um, so yeah, where, we, where, where are we gonna drop to? Um, my guess is this tippy top, but no guarantees. We could just rise up from here, right? Let me just show you some examples. Um, okay, let's say for example here, tippy top. Did we touch the tippy top? No. Just drop a little bit. Buying pressure came in, pushed the price higher, right? Um, did we come back to the tippy top here? No, we didn't, right? No guarantees. Again, up. Did we come back to the tippy top? Yes, we did. And then pump, we're out. See, so no guarantees. Doesn't mean you know we hit all tippy tops. Um, yeah, that's all BDC for you. Sol USDT is again still in a uh, bullish trend. We still expect more upside. If anything, this is a wave one. Uh, this whole thing is a wave two. Uh, we're up. Wave three. We're in a wave four. Wave four is a symmetrical triangle. I'm expecting a symmetrical though. Will we get it? <laughs> we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, could we take out these lows? Yeah, we could. Zip a bit lower sweep these lows before going higher. Best case scenario. Absolute best case scenario, which means that uh, we are expecting the potential drop of Sol to 92. Okay, wait, let me just check the weekly first. Yes, we could. Why? Because this is a bearish engulfing on the weekly. You see this? It's a bearish engulfing. So there is a possibility we could hit a little bit lower and sweep the lows, but no guarantees though. Anyway, this is a hammer. That came in on this weekly and i do not expect uh, this hammer to be taken out anymore so the lowest that i would expect us to go is these lows sweeping these lows uh, and if you move back down to the daily it's these lows drop down sweep the lows go back up complete the wave d beautiful a b c d e i mean of course again best case scenario no guarantees trading is um <laughs> <laughs> no guarantees, of course. So we're monitoring things very closely. We're very interested for uh, a Solana trade because I suspect uh, Solana will overshoot the resistance. Uh, it could be another 100% though. So yeah, of course, no guarantees. For sure, no guarantees. But I would expect these highs to be taken out. And yeah, significant resistance should be coming in at around 160. We're at 100 bucks right now. So if you could drop a little bit to 88, yeah, then this will be sweet. Will we? Again, not too sure. We still have some room to, to go though, right? Some room, some time as well. So yeah, again, we'll see how it goes first though. We may not drop and we may just form a cup and handle over here. And then that's it, we break out. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. We shall see, but Solana is still looking pretty good. XRP against BDC, here we are for Ripple. Okay, Ripple is very, okay, not Ripple, it's XRP. XRP is very bearish, very, very bearish. Uh, there is some support over here, a noisy area, and we are there. Right, if you move over to the weekly, this is this is very bearish, very, very bearish. Uh, how much lower are we going to go? We're not too sure. Any signs of, uh, you know, bullish buying pressure? No. Okay, nope, we're not going to do, we're not going to do anything until we see the whales step in for XRP. Uh, USD, XRP is still, yeah, very weak. See, a lot of other coins have already started blasting off. Ethereum has started blasting off. BNB has started blasting off. Solana, pff, obviously. Where is XRP? That's why XRP has dropped from number three down to number seven. If nothing comes in for XRP, it is going to drop from number seven down to number 10. 
as Avalanche, Dogecoin, Cardano, so all the other coins uh, could be, you know, vying for the top 10 spot. So XRP seems to be. Yes, yeah, I don't know what's happening over here. We're, we're so weak. We're right around the skinny pink clay. So I would, um, yeah, preach caution about going long for um, XRP. Is there a possibility that we turn bullish from here? Yes. Uh, how would that look like? Okay, if we could go back all the way to these highs. Don't take that out. Come back down. Come back up here. Form something like an ascending over here. Then yes, I will flip from a bearish bias to a bullish bias for XRP. Until then, I would uh, recommend staying away from XRP. Uh, it's it's just uber weak. So yeah, there you go. Moving on, big Ada against BDC. Here we are for Ada. So Ada. Uh, okay, Ada has this neck right of uh, accumulation and up, and then we're down. And then we're up again. So it's good it's accumulation. So we're doing nothing. And we're up. And then we're down. Now we're waiting for the next up coming on for AWDC. And AWDC, I say this week after week after week after week, has a very, 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 very nice squeeze coming on. If and when Ada completes this squeeze, oh, this moonshot is a big moonshot uh, coming on for uh, AWDC. But uh, it's going to take time though. So don't fade, Charles. Charles is a he's a top top dog, uh, and yeah, again I don't see any moves yet for Ada BDC uh, on the daily. You can see something like hammers here, another hammer appearing over here. So again, uh, it feels to me like uh, Ada could be about to switch back up uh, for Ada BDC against USD. So if you look at Ada USD, we are already clearly above the skinny pink line. Uh, the trend is already bullish. Uh, again, are we gonna get a Cup and handle. To be honest, I would like uh, Ada to come back down here, form a C, complete a D, E, something like that. Nice little squeeze, we break back higher. Best thing that could happen, right? And you can see all over here, hammers, hammers here, hammers here, hammers here, another hammer over here. Buying pressure all across. Uh, but yeah, that's why the question we have is how much lower are we going to retrace? Are we gonna go, are we going to start uh, blasting off from here? I would prefer it to drop though. Sweep these lows maybe. Um, before heading higher, right? So again, we're monitoring things very closely for ADA against USD. Uh, anyway, we still have a clear target over here at 125, and we still expect more upside eventually, right? Doesn't matter if we do drop or not, uh, whether if we get an ABCDE or we get a cup and handle, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we still expect more upside for ADA eventually. AVEX against BDC. I think I've mentioned this before. Uh, it's very important to have some exposure in AVEX. Uh, AVEX is sponsoring <laughs> meme coins. Um, but hey, <laughs> we're here to make money. Um, and we expect AVEX uh, to do well eventually. We expect a reversal towards the upside. We are already uh, forming a lower low. Could we still drop lower for AVEX against BDC? Of course. Anything on a weekly for AVEX? Yeah, I see buying pressure coming in. You see weeks here. Could we still drop a bit lower? Yes, of course. Again, we could just tap the tippy top here pew, before heading higher. Any guarantees? No. For example, look at this. Did we tap the tippy top? No. So how low are we going to go? We don't know. How do you know if this if it's the end? Yeah, you'll see buying pressure. So is there any buying pressure yet? No, no buying pressure. So we're going to have to wait and see how it goes for AVEX against PTC. AVEX against USDT. Here we are for AVEX. USD, again, something like a hammer, not exactly. Mm, yeah, ADAS chart looks uh, more more obvious though. Uh, but yeah, still AVEX is in a consolidation and we expect more upside for AVEX eventually. And if and when it rises, everything in the AVEX ecosystem will rise together with it, especially meme coins. You should consider some exposure into meme coins. Reason being, this is what you call a tail risk trade. A tail risk trade is when you put a little bit of money and you expect exponential returns. You don't have to put a lot. You can just put like, I don't know, a few hundred bucks in um, some AVEX meme coins. But you have, you have to be very selective uh, with your choices. I think I mentioned it before. And... Yeah, again, so the question we still have is how low are we going to go? Are we going to go up from here? Are we going to drop a little bit lower first? Maybe sweep this low before heading higher? That would be the best case scenario though. So uh, again, we're still not entirely sure. Uh, how long will this play out? Maybe March? You'll see a break in March. Right, right now we are at 26th of February. 
So again, still few, a few weeks away, maybe one, two, three weeks away. And then once it's done, yeah, you'll see a nice breakout for AVEX. And even when AVEX continues higher, yeah, the meme coins are going to be blasting off as well, together with AVEX. All right, boys and girls, I guess that's it for today's top 10. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you in the next one. Ta-da!